Hi, my name is Nikki. My pronouns are they, them, or him, his, and I am playing Saint Barb, the human monk. The human monk. The only human monk ever to exist. So, Barb is out in the cemetery at night. And they are tending to the various shrines. There's shrines both to the dead and also to uh, various important people that have died in town or just outside of town and to various gods amongst the area. There's even a shrine to the god of Sito, despite the fact that the god of storms caused a lot of the damage that is responsible for this uh, uh, a uh, cemetery, but you know how uh, how people are. They fear gods and mm-hmm. put shrines in to them. So mm-hmm. you get to that shrine, and you're supposed to lay fresh seaweed over the sides of it, over where his shoulders are. Um, I check in my bag uh, for some fresh seaweed, and yep. I um, I find three strips and. I look back at the piece of paper I have that says like the exact order and like uh, formation of everything, and it says four strips are required. And so, I um. I, I take three of the st- the strips that were already there, and uh, replace those three with fresh ones, um, and uh, try to find some sort of water source to like wet the <laughs> wet the other technically now old piece of seaweed oh yeah there's actually so in front of it along with the uh seaweed is a urn or a cistern cool. that has seawater in it yeah so i i take that old seaweed and i just like dip it in a little bit and i'll be like that's good enough <laughs> and just lay it back out and like pull out my my piece of paper again to double check if the formation is right and it's good enough yeah it's it's fine right yeah somewhere in the distance there's a rumble of thunder, which catches you off guard for a sec. Could be a coincidence. I would get more seawater <laughs> and pour it on, and, and hope that okay, now it's good. Yeah, so that's probably what they were wanting. Yeah, it looks good. <laughs> no more thunder. Okay, cool. We're good to go. The next shrine Checkmark. is the god of death, and it is this tall, towering figure in a loose cape that is bunched at the middle and then splays off the shoulders and there's just this one hand extended that ends in a bony finger as it stares off with a blank face because it's hooded and you really can't see it and points towards the sea check my piece of paper yep this one requires a, a lotus a flower and the berries of uh, what's the thing that killed? Uh, what's what's those berries where you mash it up and it's basically a poison? What am I thinking about? Ooh. Yeah, you know what I'm you know what I'm trying to say. I think it killed Socrates, right? Yeah, yeah. Whatever that is, they yeah. want a bunch of those berries mashed in a in like a little thing, right? Okay. And then just kind of poured over the top. Okay. Um. So I have that. I have the berries. I, st- I start mashing them, um, and I'm reading the piece of paper, and I, I see that it just says poured over the top, and it doesn't necessarily, like, clarify where. Right. And so I I have a moment where it's one of those long moments that the children see me and think, like, that thing is not moving. Because you just freeze. Yeah, I just freeze. And I, I think, where is the top? And I see the... the pointed finger and I just take some of the mush and just like along like the top of the index finger and assume that's probably what they meant. Excellent. And where do you put the lotus uh, flower? Definitely. I, I think uh, I, I try to put it on top but it falls off quickly. Right. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Um, what, what's, what's the anything for a head there? Just a huge cloak covering the head. And you can't see the face. So like some like bunched up yeah, clothing like bunched made up. of stone, I yeah, assume. Yeah, absolutely. So like if it's made of stone. Yeah, lots of little places. I can I can just put it like right there. Yeah, like a boutonniere. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what that is. It's the little thing you put on a suit. Like when you go to like prom or shit. Yeah. Know, you know. 
I dropped out of high school. I don't know. I never went to a real prom. <laughs> I went to four fake ones. Right. So we have no idea. Yeah. All right. Excellent. So you put it there and you put a little bit of the berry juice and crushed chip berries on the finger. Uh-huh. Right. Okay. You're doing well. Excellent. So I would like you to roll perception. <clears throat> Oh, you have your own oh, dice. I have my own dice. Pardon me. <laughs> Dust flies off. <laughs> oh, those are nice. Thanks. I like those. Thanks. They've always been my favorite so far. Nice. Let's see if they do you well. Yeah. <laughs> this is my favorite because they give me just ass results. <laughs> wow. Natural 20. All right. So that will be my role for the rest of the campaign. You hear what sounds like a whisper come from the statue. You can't quite make it out. So you kind of lean in a bit and it says behind you and you turn around, I assume, or look around. <laughs> um, this is interesting. Yeah. I would honestly want some sort of protection first yeah. before I'm even aware of what it is. Yeah. And so, so all you have on you at the time, because you don't know your abilities yet. What what what, what is is it, is there any way to go behind the statue? Oh yeah, totally. I first go behind the statue, yeah. and then look from behind that okay. statue to what was behind me. Perfect. So you duck, you kind of duck behind, look around the folds of the robe, and there's a, three of these kids that have been like picking on you pretty relentlessly, and they all have sticks in their hand. And they're walking up towards where you are, and now they're kind of looking around, and looking around, and they and they and they start whacking on the you know the headstones and like, come on Saint Barb, come on Saint Barb, and like just kind of obviously with malice in their hearts. Okay, um, I, I um. I pull my beanie further down so it's almost covering my eyes, but I can still see like in front of me a decent amount. Yeah. And I outstretch my hands and uh and I um I walk out from behind the statue. All right. And as I'm leaving I, I say to the space that I was just in, We'll continue this later. <laughs> and I I kinda just like strike a pose. Yeah. And so they don't see you at first because you're just so quiet and mm-hmm. silent. But eventually the lead guy does. And he's like, there. And they kind of start walking up towards you. And the one dude is beating a stick against his hand. Mm-hmm. And he's like, where you been, freak? I don't answer. All right. Excellent. They start. So the one guy walks up to you. The other two circle around. You say these are kids? Kids, but like 16, 17, you know, okay. yeah, okay. jerks, basically. Jerks, yeah. yeah, jerks. The other two circle around, so they're on either side of you now, and you're kind of with your back to mm-hmm. the statue. And the one guy just shoves you really hard in the chest. And he's like, what have you been doing in here, freak? And like pushing and pushing at you. Um, I, I pull out uh, the piece of paper. I say, um, I've been doing uh, quite a lot. Uh, almost done, but that's just the way it is. He swings to knock out of your hand, but he doesn't roll well, and you're kind of quick, and you're able to kind of pull your hands back. Uh huh. Yeah. But they're getting like, now they're all kind of like moving towards you, and they're getting a little bit more intense. While they do, you hear another whisper from the statue. Mm-hmm. Protect yourself. Um, I'm going to uh, look at my, for some reason, the most important thing to me in, in the world, um, uh, my piece of paper, uh, and look for a shrine that is on a further side of the graveyard that I haven't attended to yet. Sure. And be like, I actually need to, Get a move on, as they say. Um, yeah. Start Let's heading. say there's a shrine to a uh, shrine to Wadea on mm-hmm. the other side, which is the goddess of plants. When you begin to move, you get another stick in the chest and are slammed against 
the statue behind you kind of crack your head a little bit. You're not going anywhere, freak. Protect yourself. Um, I reach up and grab the stick that's on, uh, that's like pinning me, and I, I, I try to, to grab it as hard as I can, um, but I still somewhat calmly say like, I mean, how else are, do you want to go tend to Odea? Cause she, Odea, well, she, he, they all are kind of gender Odea can fluid. Get yeah. pretty antsy if I don't get over there soon. I want you to do a strength check. Okay. Beat a 16. <laughs> wow. Natural I'm telling 20. You, I'm only going to be rolling 20s. I've seen a lot of people play D&D, yeah. and the mistake they make right. is it's they not they always roll, rolling 20s. They roll other numbers, it doesn't work out for them. <laughs> so this whole thing I'm trying, uh, it's called the all 20 yeah. style. So he goes, this dude goes to pull the stick away from you, but you've got such a good grip on it that he uh-huh. loses his, and he goes tumbling backwards and just back ass into the mud. And just mud splashes, and his friends start laughing. And he's like, you know, screw you. And he gets up, and he throws mud off his hand, and he goes to punch you. Time seems to slow down for mm-hmm. a second. And you can hear again this, protect yourself. And as the whispers exit the statue, you can kind of see them like this pale dust kind of dances around either side of you and begins to wrap around your arms and go through your fingers and into your nails. And then you can feel like a cracking and a growing in either of your hands. And as the fist comes towards you, your hand just goes up and it's bone. This bone has formed around your hand as if Mm -hmm. you're wearing a glove of bone and his fist slams into it. Blood bursts from his knuckles, you hear them crack and break and he just lets out a scream as he falls backwards clutching his shattered hand Uh and you're just there with this bone hand in yours the other two kids are now backing up afraid like what the hell what and they grab their friend and they go running off I pull up my piece of paper again (laughs) and say okay so what is a day out and um, I'm trying to ignore my bone hands. Yeah, this huge bone hand gripping the top of it. Um, it's real easy to manipulate, just as easy as your own hand would be. It's just larger. Oh, yeah. And so I'm like trying to... <laughs> trying to like find the pinpoint. Um, and I eventually just roll up yeah. the scroll and, and find myself just staring at my hands. I stare back at the statue of death, back at the bone hands, and I go go for the the berry, um, the berry finger. Yeah, and kind of touch fingers. Yeah. Okay. As you do it, the eyes of the statue flash brightly, and you see yourself in this field, in this towering suit of bone armor. There's spikes and like blades it seems like and you seem like eight feet tall and you're just this towering creature of bone and then boom you're right back to where you are and as you pull your hand back you see the bone fade just into little rivets of dust until it's just your own hand again I do like an all body check of like (laughs) yeah everything okay Oh, uh, everything's okay. everything's perfectly normal. I pick up the stick. I say, "This should actually serve as a pretty good stick for Odea." Yeah, yeah, it should actually. He need, and now all she needs is the stick. That's yeah. all that it says, like a stick. And kind of say, "Thanks." There's no no response whatsoever. Start walking towards Odea. As you turn to leave, there's a rumble, and the ground shifts, and a bone, a long, thin, straight bone, rises out of the ground, just to the edge, and perfectly balances there, about the same size 
of a, as a quarter staff. Grab it. Spin it around a bit. Perfectly balanced. Um, so I don't get to have a lot of items to myself. Um, as far as things that I own, it's a bit few. Uh, I have a lot of items that I'm given to tend to the shrines. Sure. But, but you only own them. There's a bit of joy of like, this doesn't belong to anybody. No. This could be mine. I mean, it, it, it specifically rose out of the ground for you, so it's probably a good chance to believe it's yours. I'm not positive. <laughs> right. <laughs> so I grab it. Yeah. And I kind of start using it as a walking stick. Yeah, it's perfect. The double, weight is it, perfect. Everything. I'll double check. See, like, does something need bone? I don't know. <laughs> I don't think so. Nope. Nothing actually needs needs bone. Yeah. Just start start incorporating it to uh, to my runs around around the shrines. Excellent. So you walk over to the shrine to Wu Day. It's at the far end of the graveyard where there are a grove of trees and. There's several different kinds, and they're all beautiful, and they tend to flower brighter and longer than any of the other trees in the village. And many people think that's directly because it's tied to Wudea. You get there, and there is a, basically, there's no real headstone. It's just kind of a old petrified tree with a groove down the middle to lay a new stick within. Barb mutters to themselves. Oh, I get it. <laughs> plays it down and thinks, that's kind of clever, actually. Yeah. And you kind of lay it in, and it fits perfectly. Like, normally you would have to cut down a, a stick or break down a stick. Yeah. This one fits exactly right. My luck is up today. <laughs> As you lay it down, you hear a voice behind you. You've done well here. Quick, <laughs> quick! I'm not a fan of the fear. <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. You spin around, and there is a. Uh, let me think here. There is a young elf, uh, probably equivalent of not much older than you, actually. Uh-huh. And she's just kind of like looking over, and she's looking over, you know, the work that you've done. She's dressed in leather armor, and she has this strange robe on with symbology and she has a staff which ends in a bright pink stone i say not so bad yourself thank you you've also done well i try but i can only do well tonight if you come with me can i have like an hour sure and she walks over to you, and as she does, her staff glows. The stone begins to glow a little brighter as she approaches. And she stands there, and she's like, may I see? Yes, yes. All right, well, if we split this up, we should be done in within half an hour. Let me see your bag. I'll need that, and I'll need this. Oh, I have some of that, and I'll need that. All right, meet you back here in half an hour. And she goes running off and starts... Dealing with, you know, the various shrines and she gets everything perfect. Like she just glanced at your paper and she's nailing every single one. That's really impressive. Um, when Barb first started, definitely was like, which one is this one again? Like, whoa, God, what is this God's name? <laughs> and like trying to match them, like been doing this for a while and they still... It, it takes them long because they get confused. Yeah, absolutely. She seems to know each God and she also stops and seems to say a little silent prayer to every single one of them. Um, I, um, I look uh, at my list. Um, what's, what's next on my list? So let's say next on your list is uh, the God of Sport. There is, a, uh, there is an arena to the north. Mm-hmm. Some people don't make it, so the God of Sport is your next one. All right. Is, is the... Are the materials like three basketballs, two footballs? The sweat of exertion. Um, Barb uh, pulls out a vial and says, that's what this is. (laughs) That's disgusting. (laughs) And then Barb 
uncorks it. And yeah. he goes, no, not me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not you, but it's pungent. Um, does this does this shrine? Is there a statue of the god? There's basic. There's basically a statue of like this dude and like this big Greek pose with a discus in uh-huh. one hand and a spear in the other hand, and you know, just perf you know perfection of body. Yeah, I am. Um, I, I start kind of climbing on on sure. the, the dude and. And, and uncork the, the vial again and, and kind of pour it like on the top of his forehead. Yeah. And and like look back and be like. Perfectly runs down his head. That's, that's where sweat goes, right? <laughs> I really need to clean it. I'm saying weird. <laughs> right. Could be his feet. You never know. Like whatever. And I step back and, and I, I remember that I just saw this lady mummering. Um, and I step back and, and I kind of like get in a, like a <clears throat> like official position. And I say, um. It was a good game, Coach. Uh, you gave it your all, and uh, in the end, that's what really matters. Uh, you are a winner in my heart. And I, I, I kind of look around a bit. She's over, and she's kind of looking at you with one hand on her, and she lets out a little pearl of laughter, but it's not mocking. It's, it's sweet, right? It's kind laughter. Uh-huh. And she kind of walks over, and she was like, you know what? I bet he'd like that. I think that's rather appropriate. I would assume so. You're rather good at this. Thanks. I never thought I was bad, but it's nice to hear that I'm good. Well, it's nice that you care. It's nice that you see the gods for what they are and believe that they should be honored. Barb hears this and thinks, Statue. They're statues. <laughs> They're statues, but... Wait, sorry. Did you say that out loud? No, 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 oh, no, no, no. Oh, oh, I'm, I, I was, Barb was yeah. thinking this. Yeah. It's how I always looked at everything. I believe that all the gods should be honored. I believe they should all be worshipped. Well, I believe they should all be revered because they mean everything and because they built everything. They pulled this world out of nothingness and their children have power too. And she leans her staff forward until it touches your chest. And it glows so brightly, you have to close your eyes. And it, and it sounds like, like a dry ice against metal. It's got that, you know, whining howl as it touches your skin. And then she pulls it back. Do you know why I'm here? Have I been, like, slow in my performance? Like, have I needed to, like, pick up the pace? Or, I mean, because I... As, as you saw, people sometimes can be like really distracting, you know, and I sometimes feel like I need to give them what they want. And so I put on like a little bit of like a razzle dazzle. There are people who will ask many things of you, but what matters is what you believe now and what you can do. You, my friend, are a demigod. Is that a good thing? Well, I think it's a good thing. You have been born of a god. Divinity flows through your veins. You can claim your proper place amongst immortality. Dr. Mom is a god? Well, no. No, no, no. Your mother is... Says who? Quite human. Well, I mean, perhaps I have Have you seen her work? Yeah, well, she's great, but I've been near her with my staff. She's really great. She's really great, but she's mortal. Says you. Well, no. Says this, actually. And she points to the stone. This is a god stone. They were created by the gods. Kind of as an accident, but we have them now. And they can detect divinity. Even when it's a little latent. Thank you. Or er, no, no never go. mind. I mean, fuck you. <laughs> ah, and she laughs. It is a great gift, again, in my eyes. There are others who would think it a curse. There are those who will despise you for it. But it's your burden, either way. Like responsibility burden? Oh, yes. Fuck. Yes. That is, so, the unfortunate part of this is that you must now come with me. Okay, but do you have, like, a manual or, like, a list of things that I need to get done? Because that's kind of what helps me, like... 
see it all in one larger picture so I can like wrap my head around because sometimes people ask me to do things and I'll get one part of it done and and then when I'm moving on to the next part I, I try to think of it and it's just not there anymore that's why pieces of paper is like this and I, I pull in like multiple pieces of paper yeah. from like the like for some reason it's like maybe like throughout the the months or so like I get new orders of like, oh sure you know, different like, seasons different things but they're all there like I've kept all of them to like like double check them and be like eh. and so if you have something maybe that's like so you just found out you're a demigod uh, 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 I have no pamphlets however when you arrive at the temple you will be told all you need to know and your instructors will give you many books okay are you ready uh, yeah. Excellent. And she <laughs> claps her hands, and you hear two horses neigh, and over the hill comes a pair of them pulling uh, a nice wagon. You know, like, basically, well, not in a wagon, like a carriage. Um, on a scale of one to horses. Yeah. How terrifying are these horses? They're not. They're beautiful and kind of like, uh, like like uh, they're white with spots of brown. They're not overly large, just big enough to pull the wagon. But they have mouths that, if they wanted to, they could bite. Oh heck yeah, yeah, they could I bite if they want to. Just a little bit. Yeah. I, uh, the statue of sport. It's similar to how in the beginning I, yeah. <laughs> I'm kind of moving behind it yeah. as these horses pull up. Yeah, they pull up. The carriage pulls right in front of you. They they kind of turn a little bit. And she opens the door for you. And gestures inside. Oh, carriage. Not a door to the horse. No. <laughs> yes, yes. Step inside she, my she horse. She cuts please. open the horse. <laughs> like a tauntaun. That makes him less scary. Yeah. Um, okay. I slowly edge back out. Start uh, getting my things in. Um, hey, how long will I be gone? Well... Um, at least four years. Oh, I need to tell Dr. Mom then. Okay. And she just waits by the horses. Come right back. Don't make me find you. Okay, well, don't go looking for me then. And she kind of cocks her head kind of oddly at you and then laughs. And then she turns to the horses and begins to brush them down. Careful with those. And I uh, turn away. Uh, and start heading back to what time? So it's nighttime. Yeah, let's say it's like about nine. That's so early night that I assume Doctor Mom would. Oh yeah, would probably be. She'd be up in her study going Something, over various yeah. things, right? You know, you walk in and there's like, there's like tubes boiling, and she's got you know tons of books laid out, and her hair's all frazzled. Does she normally keep it up or? Does she let it go uh, down? I would assume so. Yeah, yeah. So so she's like let it go down at this point, Oof. and it's all kind of like tangled and everything. Mm -hmm. And she's just writing by candlelight. Hey, D-Mom. Hey, how are you? I'm doing well. I actually finished already all the stuff. At, um, really? Yeah. That was rather quick. You're getting know. better at this. It literally is the quickest I've ever done it. Um, technically, I didn't do it. I had someone help me. Oh. Um, do you yeah. have a friend? I don't know yet, um, but I'm going to... They asked me to go with them uh, to a thing for a little bit, or w for a while. Wait, what? Uh, they um, had horses come up. Um, I'm okay, don't worry. Um, and they said, oh, uh, it's time for you to uh, get in my carriage. It was more eloquent than that. Um, Wait, what? They said it's because uh, the, they had a stone at the edge of the stick, and when they touched me with it, uh, it glowed. And they're like, oh, you're a demigod, so you have to come with me. Her face falls, and she pushes books to the side, pulls out a chest, and begins <laughs> ripping drawers out of it until finally she has a little pink stone, and her hands are trembling as she lifts it towards you, and it begins to glow. And she just drops it and breaks down into tears and throws her arms around you. I'm so, I'm so sorry. I, I didn't know if I'd known. How long have you had those stones? And, and she pulls back. There was a, there was a time before you were born. Something happened. I, I still don't understand, but just. I, I. 
uh, slowly, but arms are around and giving her back a hug. Yeah, she's barely holding it together right now. She doesn't. She can barely talk. She's just crying and she's saying she loves you and she's holding you tightly. Okay. Um, do you like not want me to go? Because you have I to go. You have to go. They'll come for you if you don't, and things will be very bad. I think they already came for me. This is the invitation. The invitation comes first. You should accept it. Know that I will not be able to speak with you at all. Oh, nuts. But that I care for you. Wait. And she reaches through and she pulls out things and she pulls out an amulet. And as the amulet passes over the stone. She has one hand, by the way. The st- oh, sorry. She pull- as the Get amulet. Get it right. Around. Sorry, sorry, sorry. You're as, ruining my OC. The, I'm so used to <laughs> using my hands. As the amulet passes over the stone, it glows a little brighter. And she you know, kind of loops it over your head and then pulls it around and, it and adjusts it in the front. And it's a little silver heart with a ruby in the center. It's kind of like this pierced lattice Where design. is everyone getting all these stones all of a sudden? And she touches it and presses it against your heart and it glows warm and you just feel defended. This will help keep you safe. Never take it off. Um, Barb kind of takes it and does that thing where you put it like underneath the shirt Yeah. and thinking like, Okay, I guess that's a layer of protection. And she throws her arms, well, she throws her arm around you again, Thank sorry. You. Throws her arm, gives you a, you know, a kiss on the cheek, stands back and nods. And as she does, there's a little knock at the door. And the door kind of swings open and the elf peeks her head in. Hi, all set? I said you didn't have to come find me. I know, but it's my job. And if I lost you, they'd yell at me, and they'd burn everything down. Okay. I don't want that. Sure, right. Um, I like you. Anyway, um, turn back to Dr. Mom. Okay, I will be back. Um, I'm just not going to, I'm not going to never see you again, so. I'll see you later. I will be here, and I will be here. Good luck. Oh, yeah. Be well. Yeah, you too. And she walks you to the door, and she stands in the doorway, and she waves and just looks mournfully as the two of you get into the carriage, I assume. I love you. I love you more than I have ever loved anything. Okay. And then, you know, one little tear. She's trying so hard to hold it together because she doesn't want you to be upset, Mm -hmm. but barely holding it together okay i uh i turned back to the elven half elven 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 yeah. woman um and i say um oh uh there was something at the at the at my work um that i like just found and it was super cool can i go grab that real quick yeah of course i uh, make my way back to the grave keep and um i find uh uh the yeah. Big old femur. Yeah. Um, uh, that I may be in- instinctually laid against sure. the, the god of death. Perfect. I'm um, being like, like again, like in the back of my head, being like, no, no, maybe it does go to, I don't know yeah. makes sense, but I understand. Um, <clears throat> but uh, again, checking my list, seeing no sign of a bone. No. Nope. like, all right, and I'll take it. Excellent. So you come walking back up with this large bone, like, stick, and she kind of looks a little surprised and she leans her staff towards it and it glows i mean sorry the the stone glows for it as well and she nods and she puts it back the bones a demigod too well it's part of you barb starts shaking (laughs) not literally part of you hopefully not anyway it looks like you would need that one yeah come come now we must go Okay, it takes like two minutes uh, to get the bone in the carriage. Right, like, dunk, like classic, dunk, yeah. Classic, like, mm. uh, <laughs> maybe if get we, it. Oh well, I, yeah. I, I have it. I have it. Yeah, perhaps and if we like, lashed it to the. Oh, oh. And when when we sit in the carriage, it's definitely like. <laughs> right, it's like <laughs> you on one side, her on the other, and a giant bone thing wedged in between yeah. both of you, and she's like, "Well, um, well, 
okay then. And she leans mm-hmm. back, and the carriage takes off across the hills, and you swear you hear a wail from your mom, one gasp of sadness as you ride off into the night. And we'll stop right there. 